everybody, it's Courtney and I'm back here with another design team project for Trinity Stamps. Today we're going to be using the Sunflower Bouquet Builder Stamp Set, as well as the A Latte Love Stamp Set, and finally the Coffee Mug Card Die Set. And you can see that it has three different pieces here, and we're going to start by die cutting the card twice, once with that little piece to kind of cut out the opening as well as the gift card holder. So for one of these, I'm gonna go ahead and score that on the score line that is part of the die, so that scores for you. And the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and trim directly on that score line. I only need one half of this, and I'm gonna be coloring and stamping on the piece that has that opening. So I'm gonna start off by stamping out my sentiment, and this is from the A Latte Love stamp set. And I'm just using my grid mat here to make sure that all of the words are lined up before popping that onto my acrylic block. You can certainly use a stamp positioner for this, but in this case, I'm just using my acrylic block. I do stamp this out onto my scrap piece of paper just to make sure everything looks kind of lined up before actually stamping this onto my card. I did die cut this piece with a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock and I am stamping everything with blackout ink by ink on three. So once my sentiment was stamped out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out all of my sunflowers. I am going to mask out the handle of the mug as well as the very, very top piece right above where that opening is and I'm just using post-it note tape here. You can use washi tape, you can even use a piece of cardstock. I'm going to be using all three of the sunflower images within the stamp set, and all I'm really doing here is basically creating a border. Now, you can definitely mask these and fit these real close together, or right on top of one another, actually, but in this case, I didn't want to cut out all of those masks. <laughs> these are kind of intricate, and I figured I'm just going to try to space them out the best I can. I did kind of run out of room once I reached the top, so I just had to use a teeny tiny bit of the one sunflower or the last sunflower here just to kind of fill in that area, but being careful not to overlap where I've already stamped those first two. So once my stamping was done, I can go ahead and remove my masks and I am going to jump right into the Copic coloring. And I'm not going to show you all of the coloring here because I colored all of these flowers the same exact way, but we are going to start off with our sentiment. So I'm going to color in the hug and the mug being these are open spaces. I'm going to go right in with my darkest color, which is the BG18. And I'm just concentrating my shading being to the lower left. So it doesn't really matter what side you choose to have your light source. Just keep in mind that you'll want to keep consistent with all of your letters. So you can see, for example, for that H, for the left-hand side of that H, I am going right along that left-hand side on both sides of the H, if that makes any sense, along with the bottom piece. Then I'm going to go ahead and extend these areas out with the BG13. And I'm keep making sure that I'm leaving room for a highlight because this is really what's going to give us dimension for these letters. And then I'm going to finish off with the BG10 just to fill in those highlight areas. Now, because these areas are pretty small for, or skinny rather, I wasn't really getting the contrast that I was looking for. If you've ever watched my channel before, you know that I really like to see that contrast and I really wasn't seeing it. So I'm gonna go back with that BG18 and I'm just gonna go ahead and add those shadows back in, but I'm not going to end up blending these out. I'm gonna keep them as is, being the paper is already saturated, it's gonna blend a little bit on its own anyway, but I don't wanna over blend because then I'm going to lose that scary dark color. So moving on to the flowers, I found that the BG-18 wasn't scary dark enough. <laughs> so I'm bringing in the BG-78 for my flowers as my darkest color, but I am going to continue using that BG-13 and BG-10, and I'm only using three colors for the petals. So I'm jumping right into that darkest color, and I'm adding a little bit of shading to the base and the tip of each one of the petals, and I'm also creating a shadow where one petal is laying behind another. 
Then I'm gonna bring in the BG13 and I'm just gonna extend these areas out a little bit further. Now, some of these petals, you can only see a little bit of them, but I'm being careful, even, even the slightest little bit, I'm making sure that I leave room for that highlight. Your highlight color or your scary light color is just as important as your scary dark color, and that's really what's gonna make your images pop. So finally bringing in that BG10 and I'm just filling in those highlight areas, being careful not to go over the darkest areas because I don't wanna move around that color. For the centers of the flowers, I'm going to saturate this with my Y23 because I'm kind of jumping around from color family here and I wanna make sure that these blend nicely. My E37 is my scary dark and I'm just gonna basically go around that circle. I want it to appear as if the center is popped up, so that's gonna be the lightest area. So I'm going to keep that center for that Y23. So I went ahead and colored all of the flowers, same color combination, colored them the same exact way. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the card. So this is going to fit directly onto my card base here, but I want it to appear as if there's coffee inside the cup. So I'm going to take one of my brown markers. You can do ink blending here, whatever's easier for you. And I'm just gonna color this in solid on my card base itself so that when I line up my card panel, it will look as if there is something in that mug. So I am gonna go ahead and adhere this flat down to my card base here with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I do recommend using wet glue for this, whatever you prefer, whatever your favorite is, just because it gives you a couple of seconds to kind of move things around, make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Now I do have a little bit of a smudge from my black ink there. I don't know whether you guys can see it on camera, but I just touched that up with my white gel pen and nobody's ever going to know the difference. I added a little bit of shimmer to the letters with a Nouveau Aqua shimmer pen. I also added some shimmer to the inside of the cup or where that coffee is. And you will wanna make sure that this is completely dry before adding your glossy accents, which we will in just a minute. I wanted to make this not only just a card, but a gift card holder as well. So the other piece of the die set will fit a gift card nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to the inside of my card, but I'm being careful not to put any adhesive on the little flaps themselves. You can put it under and over, but not the actual flap because you want these to move around. This is what's gonna hold your gift card in place. So once that was dry for a couple of seconds, I can go ahead and fit my gift card right underneath those little flaps and that way it won't move around inside my card. So to finish everything off, I am going to go ahead and add glossy accents, which I have been completely obsessed with lately. I've found my love of glossy accents all over again and I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of the letters and this is what's really going to make this kind of pop out a little bit more and separate these from the actual flowers. I also added the glossy accents to the coffee part and the shimmer that we added with that Nuvo Aqua shimmer pen will shine right through once your glossy accents is dry. So that is it, that is the card for today. As always, I will leave all of the supplies listed in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day, bye.